what are you cooking up this November? This month, we get a few reminders on cooking safety, talk about resources for local seniors, and take a look back on all the fun from the fire open house and pumpkin night in the park. Thank you for joining us. I'm Raquel Strand and this is Community Connection. Smoking a turkey, baking cookies, hosting a dinner. As we get caught up in all the fun and chaos of the season, it is easy to get distracted. Don't let one simple mistake ruin your holidays. Here's Assistant Fire Chief Mark Seaton to help you stay safe. Hello, my name is Mark Seaton. I'm the Assistant Fire Chief for the Fridley Fire Department. Coming to you today, we want to talk about some uh, facts and statistics around kitchen fires. Kitchen fires are the number one cause of structure fires in the state of Minnesota, according to the State Fire Marshal's Office. And unattended cooking is the number one cause inside that category. And what happens a lot of time is people will start cooking, they'll sit down and they'll watch their favorite show and they'll get involved in that and pretty soon the kitchen's on fire. Or they'll go to some other part of the house and they'll get distracted by the kids or they'll get distracted by the cell phone or somebody will call them, whatever happens. But they, they get distracted and the uh, food is left unattended and pretty soon it starts burning, then ultimately it catches on fire, and pretty soon we've got a kitchen fire. I want to talk a little bit about what you might do if your kitchen, uh, if your cooking did catch on fire. If you had a pan here sitting on the stove and it burst into flames and you'd have flames up to here, one of the safe things that you could do is take a cover and slide it across the pan, and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn the burner off. And I'm just going to let that sit until that cools off. Now you still might be generating some smoke, but I don't even want to move the pan at this point. Um, this is, and go ahead and call the fire department after that. Uh, if you've got a lot of smoke in your house, even if you've put the fire out and your house is filled with smoke, we can help get that smoke out of there. Uh, what we do not want citizens to do, if you have an incident where you come into your kitchen and the fire has went beyond the container that's, cooking. If now the uh, area around is on fire or objects next to it are on fire. That was after unattended cooking. The next leading cause of cooking fires was having combustible materials, things that are flammable next to it, whether it's pizza boxes or paper containers or bags of groceries or plastic coffee cans. These plastic coffee cans melt at a pretty low temperature and they're pretty flammable. Uh, but having items around the stove that are flammable uh, can, can lead to a fire. And one of the instinctual things for people is they're like, well, if something's on fire, I want to throw water on it. And in the exact case of grease being on fire, that is the worst possible thing uh, that you could do. If I took a cup, even, even the, just the smallest coffee cup half full and threw it on a grease fire, it, we, it would cause a, it, it would ca what happens is the water is heavier than the grease, it goes to the bottom, it forces the oil to the top and, then it, and it basically explodes. It, it causes this big fireball, it causes, causes this rapid expansion of fire. So your little fire uh, that started this small, I throw the water on it, now the fire is literally this big. And we've had three of those in Fridley in the past calendar year. Uh, where, and one of them resulted in a, a lady getting a second degree burns on her hand. And fortunately, we, th these incidents did not turn into full blown house fires. Uh, in that particular instance, in, in all three incidents, the area around there was clean and the, the amount of grease was kind of small, so it kept the fireball small and it flashed and it went out right away. But that's not always the case. Sometimes there's a lot of grease Sometimes I, there's a lot of combustible items around and they end up catching on fire and then pretty soon you've got a full kitchen fire. And at that point, we absolutely do not want anybody to attempt to fight that fire. We want you to evacuate the house. We want you to call 911 and let the professionals come in uh, and handle that problem. Uh, one, uh, one thing that's real popular this time of year is obviously turkey. We're coming up on Thanksgiving. And some people have bought these deep, they want to deep fry their turkey. Uh, these, these are safe items, but they need to be handled properly. 
Uh, they need to be done outside. Uh, we've encountered problems before when people try to do them inside their garage. They go, well, I'm outside, so it doesn't really, it doesn't matter that I'm in the garage. Well, it really does. If you improperly, if you have some kind of problem, it's in the garage, you end up burning your garage down. Uh, you want to be out on the driveway, away from the structure. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not putting a frozen turkey in there. Uh, the, the turkey needs to be thawed in order to be deep fried, uh, and it needs to be put in slowly. Uh, a rapid putting or something that's rapid, uh, that frozen into that hot boiling grease will cause a, a grease explosion and, and start a fire. One of the other things we want to talk about today is uh, these fire stops. Uh, this is a device that has a uh, fire extinguishment agent inside of it and it's held uh, up by a magnet. Uh, there's two of them in this, in this container. You can buy those at a Home Depot type store. Uh, let me show you the one that's above our stove. So this uh, is just held up there by a magnet and this is essentially a fire extinguisher in a can. Uh, when the temperature reaches a certain temperature, uh, if there was a fire here, it would reach a certain temperature, it would release the chemical agent here and it would put out the fire. Uh, these are relatively inexpensive. Uh, you, just, you don't need any tools to install them. You just put them above there. And it, it, we've had some incidences where these have been used and they've worked very well. Uh, they've stopped the kitchen fire before it really got started. So we, we highly recommend these. All right, so to recap, uh, kitchen fires, cooking fires are number one cause of structure fires in Minnesota today. Uh, and in that category, unattended cooking uh, is the number one thing that leads to a fire. So we want you to be, if, if you are working in the kitchen, you're going to have to stay working there. You're going to stay where that's in visual contact for you. So monitor your cooking. Uh, de flammable debris around the cooking area is the next cause of kitchen fires. So we want to keep our area clean, paper products, cardboard boxes, plastic items things uh, that easily catch on fire. If you have a fire, putting a container across that and putting that out would be ideal. And then I need, to, I need to remove the heat by turning the stove off. And I would still call 911. Thank you to everyone who braved a little rain and came out for the Fridley Fire Open House. We had adults gear up and handle the jaws of life in vehicle extrication. Kids tried on water suits and experienced a taste of water rescue. Jagger, Fridley's new police canine, wowed the crowd as he showed off skills in narcotics detection and suspect apprehension. Guests even fought simulated flames with fire hoses and used an infrared scope to search smoke-filled rooms. You can learn more about fire prevention on our website at fridleymn.gov slash fire safety. As we get older, there are some everyday chores that aren't quite as easy as they once were and expenses that present a challenge. If you are a Fridley senior who needs a little help or know someone who does, we have resources available. Let's take a look at two of those programs, Chores and More and a Lion's Share. Hi everybody. I am here to talk to you a little bit about a program that we've been doing for about the past five years here at the Fridley Senior Program. It's part of our foundation, the Friends of the Fridley Senior Program, in conjunction with our local Lions Club, the Fridley Lions Club. It's called a Lion's Share. And the purpose of that program when we started it, we were having requests from a number of seniors that were low income that wanted to stay in their homes but their homes had to be rehabbed a certain degree so that they could stay safely in their home. It could have been that they needed a ramp put in or it could mean that their laundry room had to be moved upstairs. Um, and it's grown into a program that if a senior needs to have um, some work done on their heating or plumbing in their bathroom or we just help somebody who needed their concrete steps redone to make it safe for them to um, get in and out of their house that all of those programs all of those things would qualify for this program to get some um, assistance some financial assistance it's a really easy process you just call the Fridley Senior Program, and I'll give you that number um, a little bit later in the program, but you just call us and tell us that you need some help. 
We'll, we will send you out an application or we'll send Chris Morin, our senior outreach worker, out to visit with you. Very easy application that you can fill out. And then um, the board of the foundation reviews it on a monthly basis to determine if we can in fact help you out. And um, we want this to be a program that we can't cover the entire cost of, of the repairs, but we can certainly help. Usually the grants are anywhere from 500 to 1,000 dollars. And then we work with you to see if there aren't other um, programs available that can help you with the remaining costs, or maybe you have a relationship with your church, or maybe you yourself have some money set aside, but it's just not enough to do the things that you need to do to accomplish these repairs. Um, so if you are interested and um, are one, low income, two, in need, you can call me, Connie Thompson, at 763-502-5162, and I can send you out an application, or we can work out something that we can have somebody help you with the application. So hopefully that will be of help and interest to somebody out there. Some of the other things that we have going on at the Fridley Senior Program during the month of November, it's our really busy season. So um, first of all, on November 10th, we have our annual Veterans Celebration. We've been doing this for probably 35 years where we bring in a guest speaker. Um, we usually have about 200 people show up and then we end it with a luncheon put on by the American Legion Auxiliary. It's a great way to show recognition to all of our veterans out there and um, it's a really fun day. Then on November 16th, the next week, we've got our annual high school dinner theater where the kids up at the high school put on their annual musical and the great cooks in the cafeteria put together a delicious meal um, that we start out with the meal and then we go in and see the play. And the play this year is kind of a blast from the past for some of us. It's the Adams Family. And um, Wednesday, the young daughter, if you remember back, um, Wednesday has grown up and she's bringing her boyfriend home um, to meet the family. Well, you can just imagine what that's going to be like. So that should be really fun. It's $15 and it includes the play and your dinner. So hopefully that'll be of interest to you. And you should, again, call my number to get registered for that. We can take a credit card over the phone. Finally, I want to remind you the time is drawing near for the holidays and we have our annual Lions Christmas dinner. I mentioned the Lions share earlier and now I'm mentioning the Lions Christmas dinner. Well, I tell you, we are so lucky in our community to have such an active um, charitable group and they've really taken the senior program under their wing and, and are helping us all the time. But those are two programs that they um, have really excelled at. The Lions Christmas Dinner is, takes place at the Banquets of Minnesota. It's on December 12th, a Tuesday from one until three. It's $5 for a great meal, entertainment, door prizes. It's gonna be a really great way to set the tone for the rest of your holiday season. Hi, I'm Nancy Shaw. I'm with the ACAP Chores and More program. Um, I've been working for them for about four years. I used to work for the Fridley Chores and More program many years ago. And with me today is Bob Dupay. He is one of our independent contractors that's been working for the chore program for what, about seven years, Bob? Yeah, about seven years okay. now. The reason we're here today, and I've asked Bob to be here with me, is because we are looking for people to work for the program. We hire independent contractors. Well, we don't hire them. We look for independent contractors to work for our program. With you being an independent contractor, you choose the jobs you want to pick. We get the calls from clients who are over the age of 60. To qualify for our program, you have to be over the age of 60. There are no income guidelines except there is a sliding fee scale. So then we will let you know what the cost would be for having services through our program. We do housekeeping, we do lawn mowing, we do snow shoveling, we do minor home repairs, we do gardening in the fall and spring, and we do raking also. 
And we've got right now about 35 independent contractors working for our program, but they work all over Anoka County. We are kind of looking for people to work in the Fridley Columbia Heights area right now. Um, with our taking over that area, we have a very big need for independent contractors to do the services for the seniors in the community. Um, Bob is one of our handyman that we send out to do, oh, Bob will put handrails up. He's actually put shower, um, shower grab bars, right? Exactly. Okay, can you name a few other things that you've done? Oh, sure. Some of the things that uh, I do for the program, it would be, you know, fixing a broken window or working on some fascia or soffit board that's fallen off a house. Maybe a new doorknob that got broke. Um, doorbell issues. I mean, all kinds of little things that, you know, these people need help with. I mean, it's just something they can't do anymore. Maybe they're in a wheelchair. Maybe they're in a walker. And they can't fix this stuff. They can't afford this type of stuff. So I think it's, it's a great fulfillment to help somebody stay in their home and help them with some of these projects. So Bob, how did you get involved with the program? There was a neighbor of mine had somebody cutting her grass. And I walked up to her and I said, well, who is that cutting your grass? She says, well, that's with the Chore and More program. And I said, well, what a great thing to do. And so then I had uh, asked the worker, I said, well, how do I get a hold of this? It'd be kind of nice, um, some extra income in my pocket, which is nice. Uh, the work is right in my area, which is beneficial to me and it's beneficial to the client. So I think it's a wonderful thing to help out with these elderly. Has it fit into your schedule pretty well? Oh, perfectly. The beauty of the program is, is um, when you do email me or call me, and I can respond either you know through my phone or whatever, and I fill out a job sheet, and I write down you know whether it was a chore or a house cleaning, and then I put down the hours, and I keep track. The client doesn't pay you any money, and uh, what happens is, is they just sign the little sheet of paper, and then at the end of the month, then I just put it on my scanner and I just send it to you. I didn't even have to, you know, come to your office. And then at the end of the month, it gets deposited right into my bank account. We try to make it as easy as possible for you so that it doesn't take up any more time for you to be doing this job. So like Bob said he fills out his job report sheet, the client signs off that he did the work to their satisfaction. There's no money exchanging hands with him. We bill the client, you send your timesheet in and like Bob said he scans it to me. They email him, they fax him, so nobody even has to come into the office. We get the job report sheet at the end of the month. We put in for pay and he gets it deposited right into his bank account the next week. So we try to keep it as easy as possible, but being an independent contractor, we let the client know that you're not licensed or bonded through our program, but that we have done a criminal background check, we've interviewed you, we've gone over the program guidelines that we have, and you've agreed to all those, and then we go from there. Um, you can be as busy as a couple clients a month to, with housekeeping, you can have several clients go the whole month and two to three hours of cleaning per every other week to once a month. And so you can do it according to your schedule too. You schedule with the client when you want to be there. So we, yeah, we're looking for, if you're over the age of 60 and you need some of these services, give us a call. If you want to work for the program, which we would just love to have you come, and Bob's kind of let you know how he's, have you had any clients that have really touched your heart, Bob? I've had a few clients that have just, uh, just been a treat to me. Once in a while, I'll get a couple cookies, you know. A lot of times, I'll get stories. It get, you know, because when you finish a job, sometimes you just sit at the kitchen table and talk for five, ten minutes. You know, and you learn a little bit about their life, and they learn a little bit about you. You know, and that's kind of a nice thing to have, too. And boy, you really appreciate what the program brings to these people. And they really tell you how much they appreciate you, too, when you work for them. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bob. If you need services and you're over the age of 60 and you live in Anoka County, give us a call. Our number is 763-783-4767. Our office is actually up in the Blaine Human Services Building on 89th and Central. Um, you can email me. I've had clients email me. My workers email me. My email address is nshaw, so it's n. S-H-A-W at ACAP, A-C-C-A-P 
acap.org. Once again, nshaw at acap.org. You can email me. We can send out applications through the email. I can mail them to you if you'd like to work for the program. We also have it on the ACAP website, which is acap.org, and you can go to that website to pull an application off under the CHORE program. Once again, I want to say we need people like Bob that have a heart that really would like to help seniors in the community, and we would keep you in the community that you're living in. The Fridley Senior Center offers a number of clubs, activities, wellness programs, outings, and events. To learn more about the services available to Fridley Seniors, visit fridleymn.gov seniors or call the Senior Center at 763-502-5150. Have you started your holiday shopping? Annie Liebel with Fridley's Business Outreach Program reminds us to shop local. Small Business Saturday is on November 25th. We would like to remind you to support small businesses by remembering to shop small on November 25th and throughout the year. Need a gift for the holiday season? Consider one of our small retailers. Tired of waiting in lines for an oil change? Stop by a local auto shop. Looking for a lunch special? Walk into a locally owned restaurant. Shopping small supports local businesses that hire local workers, contribute to the economy, and produce a diverse variety of goods and services. Whether you shop here in Fridley or elsewhere, make a big impact and shop small. Now let's see what the Fridley City Council is working on. Here's City Manager Wally Weisipel with a September Council Update. Welcome to the Council Update for October. I'm Wally Weisopel, City Manager. Here's what the City Council was up to in October. Of course, they met at a conference meeting at both sessions on October 9th and the 23rd. They discussed items but did not take any action on things such as deferred special assessments. These are special assessments that have taken place over the years that have been accruing interest and the council wanted to know more information about them and how we might be able to work with the property owners to alert them to that issue. We also had a report on river bluff erosion that's taking place and uh, the council then took some action on that later on in a council meeting. They also took some information with regard to residential organics collection. This is organics collection. It's a compost thing that comes out of the house, not in your backyard, and it gets collected at the curbside and uh, is another effective way of diverting waste from landfills. And so the City Council is going to be taking some requests for proposals to see who might be interested in uh, serving our residents with a volunteer program. This would not be an obligatory program, it would be completely volunteer, but we'll wait and see what happens from the request for proposals that will come in in November. We also heard some uh, updates from our police chief. He's creating a police advisory group. This will be a group that will uh, advise the chief on policies and procedures that the uh, police department has implemented and also get educated on uh, the work that the police department does. Uh, that group will be organizing and having their first meeting in January. The City Council also took information with regard to animal control with regards to chickens and bees and cats and that type of thing and we'll be making some uh, updates to that ordinance um, in November and it will be to allow uh, for chickens to be in backyards provided certain requirements are met and also for beekeeping again uh, provided that certain requirements are met. At our regular legislative portions of the City Council meeting, the City Council approved an ordinance with regard to telecom towers. This is allowing for a, a taller tower, 150 feet within certain areas in Fridley, uh, particularly the areas that are near the, uh, the large overhead uh, power lines. Um, and the 150 feet is to serve the industry with better cell service. So that uh, was approved as well, and then the City Council approved many assessments. Now assessments are typically the benefit for a particular property, um, and in, in regards to the street improvement projects that took place over the last couple of years, those properties are assessed a portion of the overall project because they benefit from the improvement. So the City Council approved those assessments in a public hearing. 
They also approved assessments for lateral improvements. Lateral improvements are the sewer and water lines, a private service that serves a home. And sometimes they are in need of repair and sometimes those homeowners can't afford the repair costs. So the city council assesses the property owner for those services uh, and those repairs and then the homeowner pays the, that cost back over a five year period of time. Then the city council also um, uh, passed assessments to properties that had nuisances, uh, tall grass, uh, other kinds of nuisances that take place and that the city would have to abate them uh, over the course of the last year and then we re get our, re our money back on the cost to do that through an assessment. The City Council also then accepted the RFP for the Recycling uh, Organics uh, project and we'll be getting those, uh, those bids back in in November. So that's what the City Council is up to in October. We'll talk to you next month. I'm Wally Weisopel. Fridley Fire is getting into the holiday spirit. They will be out in the community collecting toys for tots and non-perishable food items to help make the season brighter for those in need. Bring your donations and join the fun on Friday, December 8th, as Fridley Community Education presents a free movie night at the Fridley High School Auditorium. Our decorated fire truck will greet guests with a little pre-show fun. The truck will be on display from 6 to 7 p.m. and the movie starts at 7. Before we go, here's a quick look at more upcoming events in our community calendar, including the debut of a Festival of Trees at the Fridley History Center. That's all for this edition of Community Connection from Community Park, where we host fun adult sports. In fact, Broomball and Boot Hockey League sign-up is right now. Subscribe to email updates or follow the City of Fridley on Facebook and Twitter for the latest city news. We leave you now with a few moments from this year's Pumpkin Night in the Park. I'm Raquel Strand. Thank you for watching.